Okay, so I will be very impressed if you could figure out how to write this decimal as a fraction. And indeed, there is a fraction, i.e. a numerator over a denominator, that is equivalent to this decimal here, which is 0.27 repeating. Now, uh, this problem is very interesting and challenging because to figure out the answer here requires the use of a special kind of procedure. There's a couple different ways you could solve this problem, but uh, feel free to use a calculator and don't feel bad if you have a tough time figuring out what to do here. Uh, again, a lot of you uh, may not even have uh, learned this particular uh, procedure in your math class, but go ahead and see if you can figure out the answer. Again, we're looking for a fraction that is equivalent to 0.27 repeating. All right, now, if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through this very interesting procedure step by step where we could take a decimal and find an equivalent fraction. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here we go. We have 0.27 repeating. We're looking for a fraction that is equivalent to this decimal here. And let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 3 over 11. Now, if you have your calculator handy, take 3 and divide it by 11. And you'll see that the answer indeed is 0.27 repeating. In other words, we're going to get this uh, repeating pattern, 2727. And it just goes on and on and on. And if you got this right, that is super impressive. Matter of fact, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence in converting uh, decimals to a fraction. This is a big topic here that uh, we need to uh, discuss because we're talking about things like rational numbers and irrational numbers. But uh, again, if you were able to figure this out, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say, uh, you know, take the rest of the year off. I'll send you your A+. Plus. I have no idea how you're doing so well in math. Maybe you're watching that guy on YouTube. Who knows? All right, now, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost here. How did you get the answer? Well, again, this involves a very interesting procedure. And uh, it is taught in a lot of algebra uh, books and and whatnot, but it's kind of hidden away. And even some textbooks don't even uh, teach this. Don't feel bad if you're kind of lost here. But uh, let's go to just uh, take a look at the big picture of this question. So we have a decimal. Now we have a repeating decimal, and we're looking for a fraction that is equivalent to this decimal. So what type of number are we looking about or talking about here? Well, numbers that can be expressed as a fraction of integer values, things like two-thirds or maybe negative one-fourth, these type of numbers are what? Well, these are rational numbers. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a rational number because this is equivalent to a fraction, and the fraction here, again, is 3 over 11. So if we get our calculator out, this whole decimal is equivalent to 3 over 11. So this decimal is a rational number because we can express it as a fraction made up of integers. Okay, now this is in uh, contrast to uh, numbers or decimals that we cannot express as a fraction and those type of numbers like numbers uh, like pi, right? 3.14, on and on and on. So 3.14, this is an estimation of pi, right? This is an approximation, but we can never find a fraction like 3 over 11 or say 22 over 7, which is a pretty close uh, fraction or a rough approximation of the value of pi. But this number here, uh, pi, we can never find a fraction that is perfectly equivalent to pi. So this is an irrational decimal where something like this is a rational number. It's not all decimals are irrational numbers. So we want to understand that. But uh, in order to figure out uh, the answer here, we're going to have to kind of do some basic reviews on how to convert decimals to fractions. So let's take a look at some easy examples. 
And uh, here we have 0.3. So if I said, hey, write 0.3 as a fraction. Well, typically, what you would say is, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I can handle this problem because 0.3 is the same as 3 tenths. In other words, you can uh, say this decimal out loud as 3 tenths, which, of course, is 3 over 10 or 3 tenths. So this decimal, 0.3, is equal to the fraction 3 tenths. So you might be saying to yourself, well, maybe what we need to do is figure out how to say this decimal 0.2727, you know, in terms of place value. Well, that's not going to really help us. But in general, when we are converting or trying to write a decimal as a fraction, you know, it's pretty easy when we have, you know, things that kind of stop at a particular place value, like here, the tenths or the hundredths place. So here, uh, this decimal, 0.25 is what? Well, this is 25 hundredths, so we can write this as 25 over 100 or uh, 1 over 4, right? So if we go into our calculator and take 1 divided by 4, we'll end up with this decimal, uh, 0.25. Well, again, you know, uh, this kind of procedure in terms of saying the decimal to write it as a fraction, that's pretty easy, but in this particular problem, this is not going to help us out unless you can say this uh, decimal 0.27, you know, there is no place value because it's just repeating on and on and on. So what should we do? Well, we're going to have to use a very interesting procedure. Okay, so again, this is something that uh, some of you probably learn, and there are a few other techniques that you could use to figure out the answer here, but uh, I really like this um, particular technique. And so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And again, don't feel bad because this is not in every single math book. Okay, And, and unfortunately, I think that um, some textbooks out there uh, just kind of leave out some uh, really good procedures that you should know. So don't feel bad again if you've never seen this. But here is our problem. So the decimal that we're looking to uh, find a fraction for is 0.27 repeating. So just to uh, be clear, when you have a repeating fraction, uh, this part, we have a repeating pattern, right? So this part of the fraction, or sorry, the decimal is repeating. So 0 0.27, so 27, 27, 27. So instead of writing a bunch of 27s or 27s into infinity, what we could do is just express this repeating decimal as 0.27 with a bar over it. So if you see a decimal like this, 0.27 with a bar over it, this part of the decimal is repeating. Okay, so then in other words, we're going to have 27 and then another 27, and another 27, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, let a variable x represent the fraction, okay, that is equivalent to the decimal 0.27 repeating. So let's let x represent this fraction. Right? There is some number, and of course, we, do, we already know the answer. It's 3 over 11, and uh, that x is equal to, or this number x is equal to 0.27 repeating, but we're going to think of x um, as our fraction. Okay. Now, we're going to do something very interesting here, and we're going to take a look at what's going on in terms of uh, the place value of the repeating pattern of 0.27 repeating. Okay, So here, uh, what's happening is we're uh, repeating the pattern at the hundreds place. So this is the tenths of place. This is the hundreds place. This is the thousands place. Remember, kind of your basic uh, place value. So if I have 3, 1, uh, 8, for example, the 3 is in the tenths place. The 1 is in the hundreds place. The 8 is in the thousands place. All right. So just a quick review. So we're repeating or we're starting our repeating pattern at after the hundreds place. In other words, we've got 2, 7, and then we repeat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this number here, okay, or this uh, variable, we're going to let x equal to 0 0.272727, 27, and we're going to multiply both sides by this place value, okay, the place value where it is repeating. So it's repeating at the hundredths place. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 100. Now you're going to see why. We're going to do this in just one second. So in this particular kind of example, it's best to just kind of learn the procedure. And then once you kind of apply this procedure, I think you'll understand why we're doing what we're doing. Sometimes in math, this is the way to learn. OK, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which is to take this 100 and multiply it by both sides of this equation. Again, x is going to represent our fraction uh, that is equivalent to 0.27 repeating. And we're multiplying both sides of the equation by 100 
because the uh, pattern repeats at, after the hundreds place. Okay, so this is the tenths place, the seven is the hundreds place, and then again, so right here, uh, the pattern repeats again. All right, so this is why we're going to use 100. Now, uh, there is a specific reason why we're using 100 and not 10 and not 1,000. You'll see this in just one second, but just kind of follow you know, my logic here. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 100. I think uh, this uh, procedure will make sense once you see the entire thing. But uh, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to grow. I just recently uh, went over 600,000 subscribers, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm at 100 million plus views, which really blows my mind. I mean, uh, I never really thought about these type of numbers when I started my YouTube channel many years ago. Uh, what I'm trying to do is just focus on the content. And uh, as long as I'm around, I still have uh, you know, pretty much every intention to post YouTube videos, math YouTube videos, from basic math to advanced math. And my channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable and really try to encur encourage people not to give up on mathematics. So I like to take a problem you know, uh, from this range of mathematics, basic to advanced math, and just kind of walk through it nice and slow. Because oftentimes people, you know, get frustrated learning mathematics because, you know, they're trying to learn math too fast. Or they say to themselves, well, I'll never learn this. I'm not, well, let's, if I break it down, okay, some of these problems in nice, slow, bite-sized kind of pieces where you can understand and comprehend, you know, how to do a particular problem, well, your confidence is going to go up and you're going to stick with mathematics. So that's what my channel is all about. But I need your help. And the best way to uh, support my channel is to literally hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's get back to this procedure. This is very interesting. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 100. Now, when we do that, we're going to get 100 times x, which, of course, is 100x, and then 100 times 0.2727 repeating. Now, when we take 100 and we multiply it by 0.27 repeating, uh, remember, this is the tenths place. This is the hundreds place. So what's going to happen is this decimal point is going to move over two places to the right. Okay, this is kind of uh, very similar to um, uh, percent problems. When we multiply uh, by 100, we move the decimal point uh, over two places to the right. So now we have 100x is equal to 27.2727. And this is where the problem is going to get very interesting. Now, this 100x on this side, this is fine. Over here, we have 100, I'm sorry, uh, it, uh, 100x is equal to 27.27. But remember, this right here, and I really should make this extra clear. Okay, let me kind of back up right here. We're multiplying this 100 by uh, what? Well, this is 0.272727 repeating, okay? So our answer on this side of the equation is 27.2727, and this 27 repeats. Okay, so I can't, I'm not going to write the entire thing out here, but just so we understand, this 100, uh, we're multiplying it by this repeating decimal, 0.2727. So we're going to end up with this 0.27 repeating over here as part of the, uh, the decimal uh, part of this answer. Okay, now hopefully I'm not stumbling or bumbling on my <laughs> explanation here too much. I don't want to confuse you any more than you uh, may be. But the reason why we're doing this is that we want to get rid of this repeating part of the decimal. Okay, so how can we get rid of this 0.27 repeating? Well, we can actually use a very interesting little uh, technique here. And what we're going to do is take our answer. So we multiply both sides of the equation by 100. And now we have 100x is equal to 27.27 repeating. So let's get rid of this part of the decimal, the 0.2727 um, uh, repeating part of the decimal. And we can do that because we can subtract uh, um, x from both sides of the equation. Now, this part right here is going to be confusing for some of you. Now, let's go back up here and recall that we let x equal to, okay, right up here, we let x equal to 0.27 repeating. Now, this was our first move in this little procedure. Okay, so this number here, x, is equal to 0.2727 repeating. 
Now, remember, when we solve equations, okay, so let's just take something right here. Let's say we have 4x is equal to 10. In algebra, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it, uh, do the same thing to both sides. Now, in this case, we want to subtract x from both sides of the equation, and that's perfectly legal. We can do that. But in uh, this particular uh, circumstance, I'll go back to the step here in a second, x is equal to 0.27, all right, 0.27 repeating. So we're going to subtract uh, the same number from the both sides of the equation. But on the left-hand side, we're going to use x. But remember, x is the same as 0.27, right? So this is the same value. So we're going to subtract that same value from both sides of the equation. And this is kind of a little trick that we can use to get rid of this uh, repeating part of this decimal. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. And now let's go ahead and pick up the problem right here. So we have 100x is equal to 27.27 repeating. And our obje uh, objective is to get rid of the 0.27 repeating part. So we're going to subtract x from both sides of the equation. Remember, x is equal to 0.27 repeating. So we're going to subtract uh, this same value. Okay, x is uh, 0.27 repeating. So when we do this, we're going to add down in a column manner. And we're going to get 100x minus x is 99x and 27.27 repeating minus 0.27 repeating. This part right here, well, these uh, decimals, this part of um, uh, these numbers right here, the, the repeating decimal part is going to go away. So we're going to just be left with 27. Okay, so this is a great little trick. So now we're down to 99x is equal to 27. And we can simply solve for x by dividing both sides of the equation by 99. And we're going to get 27 over 99. And we're going to reduce this fraction to 3 over 11. And there you go. This is the fraction that is equivalent to 0.27 repeating. And, of course, we could prove this by going into our calculator and taking 3 and dividing it by 11. All right, so this little trick here is uh, something that, again, is not in every single uh, every single math book. I think this tends to be in older math books. I actually kind of remember learning this way back in the early 1980s. Now I have no idea why I would uh, remember uh, such a thing. But uh, back in the good old days, and I'm talking about uh, early 80s or mid 80s and uh, uh, prior to that, the 70s and, of course, the 60s, when uh, calculators were kind of coming into play. Now, if you went to school in the 70s, you may or may not even had a calculator. But in the 80s, calculators were becoming obviously more common. But the textbooks um, showed you a lot of procedures and things like interpolation, if you're familiar with that word. There was a lot of um, things that you could you would learn in older math textbooks. They're still kind of around. Uh, that was kind of like a manual way of doing things, okay? And uh, I don't know if that kind of makes sense, but in the back of a lot of, like, say, uh, trigonometry textbooks, you use tables, and tables for trig uh, trigonometric functions and things like log logarithmic functions. You actually, you know, looked at the back of the book for these particular tables. So you uh, were kind of taught some very interesting little procedures like this, but I find this to be the case that uh, this... Uh, procedure, okay, how to take a repeating decimal and write it as a fraction just doesn't seem to be that common. But if you learn this in school, that is fantastic. And if you figure this out using some other technique, well, that is even more amazing. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.